How are you? I'm Diane Brady, your moderator and MC for today. So welcome to Innovate 2018. And, and hello to everybody uh, who is um, watching on live stream. So this is, everything today is on the record. So if you have any trade secrets to share, keep it for the Symphony platform. Um, and also, I just want to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way as everybody's coming in to get seated. One thing is to be sure to connect with the Innovate bot on the Symphony app and use the bot to check in at all the trade show booths outside. I've already been collecting some of my um, knickknacks. Always great. And, and, and you'll be entered to win an Apple HomePod or an Oculus Go at the end of the day. If you're looking for Wi-Fi and you haven't um, figured it out yet, it's on the back of your badge. And of course, feel free to share anything today on social media. The hashtag is Innovate2018. So this is my third year uh, moderating at Innovate. I've been here since the beginning. And I have to say, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately is the power of networks. And I did a book, um, came out last week with John Chambers, formerly of Cisco. And for him, the power of networks was very much about architecture, interoperability. And with Symphony, it's interesting, I'm really starting to appreciate the power of networks for this platform in terms of ecosystem and community. It really is a gateway, I think, to unleashing creativity and collaboration. And how do you do it? Not just in financial services, but elsewhere, it's on trust. So if you have not seen David Gurley's blog this morning, um, I very much recommend you go read it. Uh, it's, I think, very much part of the zeitgeist right now that trust is declining at a time when we need it more than ever. Um, because that's the future, the speed and scale of digitization. We need to collaborate. So I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited to hear the conversations. I'll be moderating a, moderating a conversation later. And I encourage you all as well to go to some of the breakout sessions this afternoon. Those will be terrific. So without further ado, let me please introduce the founder and CEO of Symphony, David Gurley, who um, everybody knows. Oh, there you are. I was about to just continue. <laughs> filler. He's changed since this morning. Anyway, David, welcome. And tell us what's up with Symphony. Thank you, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Innovate. Um, I should have uh, my picture coming up here. Uh, we try to... Uh, make it work a bit better than last year. As you can see, um, <coughs> the marketing team decided that um, I am aging over time, which is kind of normal. Um, and they decided to put this thing instead, which makes me look, you know, young forever. Um, so, uh, Andrew, thank you very much, <laughs> wherever you are sitting. Uh, it's really a pleasure to host you here again in New York, in Conrad, in downtown, in the heart of Wall Street. Um, in 2018. This is the fourth year of Symphony. Just the fourth year of Symphony, I should say. Um, you know, we've been uh, born October 1st, 2014, um, out of a set of core needs in financial services that we'll talk a lot about today. And uh, throughout this journey of four years, we've accomplished quite a bit. And uh, there are some New faces here, and welcome. Uh, there are some people who've been coming here for some time. Welcome back. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank our partners, our sponsors, our customers, of course, the media and the press, and most especially the Symphonians, who have worked so hard to make this journey today possible. So thank you very much. Today's agenda is really going to be about not symphony journey, but the journey of our customers. Um, what I have seen in the last nine to 12 months is an inflection point, an inflection point that we all look forward to when we create a new organization, a new technology like Symphony, that we always are afraid that it's gonna take way too long before we run out of money. Um, we are not in any of that condition uh, for a number of reasons that actually will be demonstrated throughout the day today. The journey for me for the next 20 minutes is taking you back to 2017. Just see where we were back then 
what was the product set that we announced and we built October 2017. From there, we look at the journey of transformation, the transformation of our company, the transformation of the market, the trans transformation of your businesses that's going to take place in this new digital world. That's the key theme that we are focusing on. This is where we're going to double click. You're going to look into the opportunities, also the challenges, and each and every one of you is facing as you are transforming your organization. And I have a chance to meet at the CEOs and COOs. It's a privilege to talk to them, you know, year after year, month after month around the world, from Tokyo to Australia, to Singapore, to Hong Kong, to everywhere around the world. I keep asking them always the same question. What are your top priorities? What is it that you would like to achieve? If you could just name those three things to me. And number one thing is about transformation of their business to the new digital era. This is what we are going to explore together. Later, during my presentation, I'm going to invite a set of colleagues as well as customers on stage, and they are going to showcase what this means for them. And we'll have some fun towards the end, and then we'll go for coffee. So let's kick it off. 2017, we talked about what we call the social operating system. For me, it was an aha moment back then. I suddenly realized that what we were building was not just a messaging tool to our customers, but it was first and foremost a platform that enabled rich, powerful, secure communication and collaboration. Through that network, they could exchange any form of content, content that's generated into your messages, content that is in free form, content that's structured, content that comes from other systems, content that flows through your networks, from your networks to your customers. If you were to double click what it means in terms of the product stack that we were talking about last year, I'm just going to highlight some key elements that will carry us forward throughout the day. The platform, the collaboration content are here to create this secure highway that Symfony is building. The secure highway is increasing you to create ability to have faster and faster business. And here is why. At the heart of it, the notion of trust. Security and compliance are built in the fabric, in the very fabric, in the DNA of our architecture, of our solution, of everybody in the organization. This is a very hard work. We have made a choice five years ago, just before Symphony was founded, with Mike and I, that we will create a new sort of operating system. An operating system in which the cloud is not as smart as others are building, where the edges, intelligence, they are smart, they act on the behalf of the users. And this is going to be a ma major topic for us. Next, going back to the next level, I'd like to highlight real-time communications, intra- and intercompany collaboration. That's really why Symfony is actually so powerful, because you do not have to have only one tool for external, another tool for internal, another tool for other internal communications. You can have one communication and collaboration platform that spans across all of your organization. There are some organizations who have made that leap and some organizations who are in the process of making that leap. And what they tell me constantly is, it's incredible how much this has simplified our life and created this connected tissue that's really helping our organization not only do things faster, but have a much better collaborative culture and transformed our culture in the new era that we are going to talk about. Last but not least, just to highlight the chat rooms. Last year, the chat rooms were in the collaboration stack. I moved it up. The reason I moved it up is because I just checked the statistics this morning and looked at some of the numbers. So let me just share you one thing. Since the beginning of Symphony, 
chat rooms has always been a team collaboration construct. But in the last 12 months, it has become a content distribution platform. And this year, just last month, there has been 250 million messages read by Symfony users on chat rooms. That is a massive number. It's over 1,000% growth year on year. It's, it's mind-blowing what our customers are doing on Symfony in terms of how they synchronize their organization so that they can execute faster. So let's look at the numbers. It's always fun to see what the progress we have made. Last year, 250,000 users, about 200 companies, about 267,000 attachments, and 26 million messages were sent. This year, just a year after, 375,000 users across 350 companies, 600,000 plus attachment sent, and over 40 million messages. The network is building up. And it's fascinating to see it grow in front of our eyes. And it's building up for a reason. And I'm always curious to understand why so. But before I answer that question, there was a surprise, a big surprise for me. We decided to look into another statistics, which I have not shared with you last year, because there was nothing to share. We introduced these APIs, and then suddenly, people started to embrace them. And it became the pivotal moment of Symfony. Suddenly, in addition to the collaboration use case that you are accustomed to and you use every day, there is a new set of use cases. This is just an illustration. 580 bots serving dozens of dozens of workflows and addressing solutions across thousands of thousands of use cases within our customer premises. We're going to talk about that a lot today. And when Leah and Chris are going to come on stage, they will take us through a journey, a journey that is real, a journey that is in the life of a Symfony user within financial services. And we will see how those bots have changed the life of these customers. As you look into the reasons, I promise that I will go after that, um, I think at the bottom of it, at the heart of it, we provide trust and confidence. Diane said there was an element in my blog this morning around trust. And this is really what I've come to realize. Because I asked the question to our customers, our partners, why Symfony? What's that we are doing that, that appeals to you at the end? What is that? You know, is it the features? Is it the colors? Is it, is it the speed? No, it's at the end we can trust you. That's the real question. And we can trust you because your security model is unique. You reviewed it. You tested it. You validated it. You attacked it. And we. You know, you earned our trust, and we earned your trust together, and so that we can collaborate with confidence. Without that, we wouldn't be sitting here. What this enables is productivity. The productivity increase is the agenda of every team, every organization. So let me share a number with you. Yesterday morning, I was talking to a very large buy side around the trade break scenarios. I think we'll talk about this today later. One trade break, just one, generates 1,800 emails in that organization. 1,800 emails. Group across dozens of people, across different companies, and they have to resolve it in the same day, sometimes in the same hour. Can you imagine the time lost dealing with so many messages figuring out who is doing what. Well, in the universe of Symfony, it's just one chat room, dozens of messages, and voila. In a matter of a few minutes, everybody is in the loop. Who needs to do an action is at mention, hashtagged, and suddenly the trade break is resolved, and we move on. That is real benefit. That's real productivity. And that's what makes our customers dream about what's next. 
What's next for them is really about speed. You know, we all want to go faster. We all want to go faster without making any mistake. We all want to go faster without making any mistake with confidence. And we are here to serve our customers. We are here to serve you. You are here to serve your customers. And that's really why those numbers are going up. Because there is hope. And there is a need. And there is pressure to reinvent. There is pressure to disrupt. There is pressure to find new alternate ways through which we communicate, collaborate, and simplify our business. That is this new digital workplace. I put the new before because there is a digital workplace today. There is. I'm not trying to invent something that already exists. You have information systems today. Those information systems are dozens of dozens of them. They serve your business need to some extent. Some of the information systems go to your customers. You have portals, you have applications. And they are serving different asset classes. But there's a problem with that. There's a big problem with that. The problem is complexity. The problem is cost. The problem is support. The problem is risk. And what I hear, what I see is, we got to find a different solution than adding layer after layer after layer after layer of new systems and the maintenance cost to keep those systems alive. You know what this creates? I call this the digital distance. The distance is equivalent to the time it takes to find the right information, to log into this new system, bring this information back, format it according to the new system that you're going to send it to, push send, and then wait for the response. Now multiply this by dozens of dozens of information systems. That's the challenge. This new world here is going to address that. There are opportunities that we'll go through today and few challenges that I will start with them. The first one for me is sometimes we are blindfolded. There are some real dangers in the universe of cloud computing. I hear this all the time. I'm moving to Azure. I'm taking Office 365. I'm thinking Slack. You know, I'm going to move to the cloud because this is where we need to go. This is the future. This is less expensive. I just want to warn you. I just really, really want to warn you. You are in real danger. And here is why. This is as recent as a few days ago. Now, there's no Facebook here. I love Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I have friends on Facebook. The guy who runs Facebook Workplace is a friend of mine. But Facebook is also one of the most advanced technology companies in the world. They have more engineering firepower than I could even dream of. They have more experts in security that we can afford to. Yet, look, look at what happened. Why? We'll come to it in a minute. Now, let me ask you a question. Just a question. This is, if I were to tell you this is the last successful cyber attack that Facebook is going to face, would you believe me? <laughs> Let me ask you the next question. Microsoft will never have any more security vulnerability. That's my statement. Would you believe me? Okay. Google is not going to have any more privacy issues with the EU. OK. So I think we are on, we are on something here. And that's the awareness I like to bring to the table. And this is a very important awareness. And here's why. One minute computer science tutorial. Please allow me. There is an exam at the end. OK? And so if you score well, free coffee. <laughs> OK. I, I'll do it. There's a barista there. <laughs> Here's the story. We are in the universe of client server. So there's a client, which is your browser, says, I want data. There's a business logic, checks whether you have access to this data. If you have access, grabs it from the database and downloads it into your browser. That is the computing model of today. That's how it works. 
And so what happens is if I take the data out of the database and I have to process that, you have to see this data, right? I have to apply the business logic to it. So at one point, that data lives in the memory of this computer and that data in that memory isn't clear. Whether it is encrypted in the database or not, it doesn't matter because nobody can process encrypted data today. Okay? So that's the model of Facebook. That's the model of any cloud service provider. That's the model that you have within your own organization. So you are comfortable with that because you have created the security framework to protect your data. But what you think of doing when you take that concept and give it to someone else, you are abdicating the control of trust to another party. And that's where the danger lies. There is just no way you can, because what we have seen with Facebook, it's not never going to stop. There are millions of vulnerabilities that exist in the current computing model. But don't worry, we got your back. That's why we are here. That's why you trust us. We do not process data in the cloud. You cannot trust us in that concept. We rely on the public cloud, like you do, and we don't trust them. The only thing we trust is you. In your environment, you have built a very secure infrastructure that you trust. So this is where we encrypt, decrypt the data. This is where we process the data. And therefore, it is in the control of your own IT organization that you have been relying on for so many years, and you'll continue to do so for so many years. And that unique computing model, and this is the end of the tutorial, by the way, that unique computing model is what distinguishes Symfony from any other organization, because that's how you build trust. And that's what we've been focused on for the last four years. So have you ever seen somebody hacking something in real time? Raise your hand if you've ever seen it. Have you ever done it yourself? Few. So just after the coffee break, Mike and Lawrence, our CTO and CSO, I'll invite them on stage. And they are going to hack in real time, in front of you, really, a cloud service provider. Now, that's going to be fun. You see how it's done, and you see how easy that is. There will be some show behind it. So, Coming back to opportunities now, we talked about this new digital workplace challenges, but what I see is actually the opportunity to reinvent. But before we can, we have to understand the state of where we are today. And that state is complex. It's getting more and more complex. But I try to represent in this wonderful graphic our walls, our frontiers, our borders that are virtual to a large extent, created by our own making as we invest and maintain silos and silos and silos of information and create rules over rules over rules of entitlements, information policies, information barriers. And most of them are necessary because we are regulated to some extent in these financial services. At least you are. And so how do you create an environment in which you simplify that world at the same time you free it up? And that is what we have been seeing for organizations that have adopted Symfony. It's not my slide. Actually, this is a slide that we kind of looked at two weeks ago on one of our very large sell-side customers. And when they presented that, I really got inspired one more time. I said, wow, I'm really working on something really cool. And, um, and what it does for, your, for their business and for your business is simplifying to invest more. That's really the bottom line here. Uh, some interesting numbers I'd like to share with you. I've been in Australia not too long ago with my friend Sarp, and we've been talking to one of the large um, institutions there, 
And, um, and you know, they are considering seriously symphony. For them, symphony is a very interesting construct um, in order to simplify their front to back office and back office to back office operations. And, um, and what I have learned is that we are going to save them per year over 10 million US dollars just by investing just a few hundred thousand dollars. We are going to save them over 10 million dollars just on a very tiny bit of the workflow that they are dealing with. And they have very high hopes because if that is indeed successful at the end of next year, then they're going to invest more and more and more and take out more and more cost. And that is a very good case for deploying Symfony from their perspective. It's not my perspective, it's their perspective. Another customer, still in the same zone, Australia, um, asked me the following question. He said, this is fantastic. Why is that I should not replace Skype for business with Symfony across my or whole organization? Well, I said that Symfony to my ears. He said, oh yeah, but I don't want to pay too much. I said, how much you pay? Well, it's free. I said, what do you mean it's free? Well, Skype is free, you know, it's part of the bundle, right? Microsoft bundle. And then we had this very interesting conversation about the price of free, <laughs> okay? And that's something that actually really resonates. What does it, how much does it cost to be free? What is the benefit of free versus the benefit of something that really delivers business value to your organization? And so that conversation led us, with this particular customer, to consider now a much broader symphony usage than just a front office. And these are the conversations that I am delighted about because this gives us opportunity to change things for good. So to bring it home, this new digital workplace gives an edge to each and every organization, which you cannot avoid. If you are not on the edge, you are falling behind. If you are falling behind, the cost to catch up, it's not that you can't catch up, but the cost to catch up, the opportunity cost of being late is going to be the cost of your business. Those organizations who do it faster, smarter, will arrive first at your customer's door. And they will serve them much better than you can. And I'm really delighted because I talk to lots of digital transformation executives within our customer base, within our potential customer base. And uh, as I said earlier on, this pivotal moment where the APIs have enabled these bots, these bots have enabled these workflows, these workflows have become automated. We are really at the heart of this transformation. But this transformation comes with the disruption. The disruption is necessary. There's nothing wrong with it. The whole industry is co in constant cycle of disruption, recreation, reinvention, and it just goes on. And this disruption is about challenging the status quo. It's about making bold decisions, bold investments. It isn't about looking at the $1 million unit span. It's about looking at the millions of dollars you're going to save if you make the right investment. So the colleagues that are going to come on stage later on from our customer base are going to illustrate what I just said far better than I can even think or articulate. Because they are truly innovating. And this is the reason we call this conference Innovate. This is not about what we do, it's about what the community does. Diane talked about the power of networks. And I always get asked the question is that, you know, what does this, what is Symphony's USP? What is the Symphony's unique selling point versus any other thing I could consider? Security and compliance aside, it's the network, it's the community, it's you. Because we are building what you want. The most important thing is that you are building what you want. 
in a way that was not possible before, in a way that was too expensive before, in a way that was not secure before, in a way that it was very complicated before. And we are just in the beginning of the journey. We innovate on our hand, you innovate on your hand. And so with that, we are going to the next phase of my presentation. And it is my pleasure to introduce our Chief Product Officer, Ken. Come on stage. <laughs> Ken also looks very young, <laughs> and that is the new avatars on, on Symphony. Looks like I'm ready to go dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to walk us through on the innovation that's been happening at Symphony that will unleash the innovation that happens in our community. Absolutely. I'm excited to do it. I'm looking forward to it. I'll All be right. back. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, David. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. All right. We all had our coffee. I had mine. <laughs> Uh, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, I was just being up here on stage, being here back in New York. I started my career 25 years ago, actually, here in New York City. Thank you. Um, I started my career here 25 years ago, actually, just a few blocks from here at 23 Wall. Um, I walked by it the other day. It's kind of gutted out. They're redoing it now. Um, and then, you know, a couple years after that, I was actually working on a fixed income desk. It was 1998. I decided I was going to quit my job, propose to my girlfriend, and move to California. Best decision I ever made, especially proposing to my girlfriend. She said yes. Um, we're married now. So I, I've witnessed many disruptions in technology and business throughout the years. We saw, over those years, we saw Amazon, companies like Amazon, disrupt the retail industry. And now they're disrupting the data center with cloud and APIs. Box, Google, those companies disrupted the network drive. Remember those? You probably still, maybe even still have some, but that's gone. Collaboration, the way we share files, that's all changed. I was at MuleSoft. MuleSoft disrupted connectivity and ushered in the API economy into the enterprise. And as David mentioned, Symphony's for the last four years has been disrupting communication and collaboration in the financial services market and the enterprise. And this is what has really excited me. I joined Symphony six months ago. And this has been really exciting to me because all these disruptions, they all come together. Cloud, collaboration, connectivity. They're all coming together to form this new digital workplace that David described. And that digital workplace requires a connective tissue that takes your people, your applications, your data, and it brings them together. And Symphony really has become this connective tissue and allowing you to innovate on top of it. So there's also, as we talked about, a lot of a complexity, both in our lives and in work. And you need a way to, a solution, a better solution to deal with this complexity. And at Symphony, that's one of the things we're doing. We're innovating to help figure out how to provide that better solution for you. And that solution needs to be able to securely connect your people and your data together in a way that can cut through all that noise and bring some context into the conversations that you're having. So with that goal in mind, today, I'd like to make three very important announcements at Innovate. The first is the new Symphony desktop application. We want to be able to allow you to connect to each other. And with the new uh, desktop application, we provide a better way for you that's simpler, it's faster, it supports our real-time communication services. And with that desktop, we now have a mode called light mode that allows you to have previews in your left navigation. And we have added several new features that cut through that noise. Auto clear and bookmarking are just two, and we're going to be showing those to you here today. The second thing I'd like to announce is the third generation of our content filtering engine, which brings data loss prevention. So we wanted to really raise up the level of collaboration. And to do that, you need to have access to all of your content, whether it's your office documents, it's PDFs, code files, or any other type of content. You need access to that in Symphony. And that, with data loss prevention, we ensure that both your message content, but also your file attachments are secure, and you can communicate in a safe and compliant way. Now, we built this natively into the platform 
because we need to make sure that it supported the level of encryption and the secure real-time environment that we have at Symfony. My last announcement is the new Symfony for Microsoft Office. You know, we want to, we want to make sure that we are available to the broadest audience possible. And Microsoft Office is the ideal um, entry point in order to bring those conversations over into Symfony. We're able to connect your workflows and provide an integrated digital experience that allows you to communicate in real time and can connect Outlook, Exchange, and Symfony together. So all of these new capabilities are available in our upcoming winter releases. And I'm very excited about the advancements that we have in Symfony, and I hope you will be too. And the best way to share that with you is to show it to you. So what I'm gonna do now is I actually wanna give you a live look into the new Symfony. So in this demonstration, I'm gonna play the role of Scott Bell. Scott is a senior analyst at a hedge fund called Feldbar Capital. And Scott's job is to ensure that his company's investment strategies are sound and to make recommendations that help the, their portfolio. So Scott has the new Symphony desktop installed, and the first thing he notices is how much more responsive and faster it is. When he logs in, he can open chat rooms. It's twice as fast as before. And he quickly catches up in team rooms, like uh, the one for Market Color, where he can catch up with overnight news and new research. And Scott's also noticed that on his left navigation, that is much cleaner. There's less noise and clutter. Now, we listen to you, our customers, and one thing that we've heard uh, time and time again is that as your conversations go on, you really start to build up a lot of noise from old conversations in that navigation. So we created a new feature called AutoClear. And with AutoClear, it cleans that up so that you only see the conversations are most timely and relevant. And we remove things that you've already read for you. And this is something that each user can, can configure for themselves. So once he looks to that left nav, he might find some signals, he might send some messages that requires attention. In fact, it looks like he's got a message from Ashley here. So Ashley is a portfolio manager also at Feldbar. And she's concerned that overnight interest rates have, sp interest rates have spiked and there's this escalating trade war going on between the US and China. Ashley has a large portfolio of corporate bonds, and she's wondering if I can recommend any strategies to her that might help her both protect her downside and maybe just maybe take an opportunity to take advantage of this situation. So I let Ashley know that I'm right on it. I'm happy to help. I'm going to get her, get her something today so she can execute that trade. And the first thing I want to do is I want to bookmark her message. So I bookmark it. Bookmarking is an important new feature in Symphony. With bookmarking, that message from Ashley is immediately available in my bookmarks folder. This allows me to quickly and easily access it, and then I can add some notes to it to add additional context. What do I need to do to follow up? In this case, I need to go and make sure I update my models for her, so I make a note of that and add it in. I could also apply other information into my bookmark because it's editable, and for example, if I had many different disparate pieces of information that I wanted to collect together, I could use bookmarks and the bookmark notes in order to apply metadata context to that so I can organize it easily for myself. So now that I've bookmarked this, I need to go and do some research. What can I do to help Ashley? So I remember there's been some couple research reports and there's one in particular that I think brought me an idea that I could apply in this situation. So it talked about a couple different uh, strategies where I could apply a couple options in this situation. But you know, this is not something that I've done before and I wanna make sure I get it right for her. So I need to contact a friend of mine. I have a friend named Mike. He works over at uh, Silver Moon. And he, he mentioned to me once before he's done something like this. Now Mike and I are both on Symphony. So even though we're at different firms, this means that we can securely connect with each other. And I'm gonna send Mike a message. And in that message, I can use a hashtag that we agreed to um, in order to make sure that he knows that it's urgent and something that we should follow up on. Now, um, one of the first things when I came to uh, Symphony, uh, one of the first changes I wanted to make on the product, we have a feature called Signals that, that I can use to, to contact Mike. So I wanted to change the name of this to be Bat Signal, but David wouldn't let me. But today in my demo, I'm going to use my Bat Signal. So I'm going to send a note to Mike, and he's going to immediately get that note. He'll get alerted on his desktop, and he can respond to me. He says he's, he's glad to help. So 
but he needs to get access to the report. So it, it was a public report, so no problem. I can grab it. I drop it into the room and send it right over to Mike over Symphony. No problem. Here it is. And hopefully Mike can take a look at it and know what I'm talking about, and he'll be able to help me out. So I send it to Mike, and up. Uh, oh, guess, actually, I guess there was a problem. I should have probably paid a little bit closer attention in the room where I grabbed that report. It has some internal commentary that was marked up by our analysts at Feldbar, and it's marked confidential, and I'm not allowed to send that outside the firm. Symphony's new data loss prevention was able to, in real time, scan not only my message, but the content of that PDF against the firm's policies, discover that it violated that policy, and then block that message from going out. It really saved me in this situation. I could have really messed up by sending this out. So thankfully, Symphony did that work for me. Instead, I'm just going to have to send the link. I'll go find the public link to this, send that to Mike, and then he's able to access that on his own and get back to me later today. All right, so now I'm waiting on Mike. I got to catch up on some other work, so I'm going to go over into Outlook and uh, catch up on my emails. Wow, you know, I just spent my whole morning in Symphony, so this really feels dated. But <laughs> the best news, my inbox is not that full these days, because all my work is getting done on Symphony's real-time platform, so it doesn't take long to catch up. There's this one email thread, though, and man, this is what happens in emails. It goes back and forth and back and forth. Nobody can make a decision. We need, to get, we need to get this done. So let's move it over into Symphony where we get our work done. I just click reply via IM and automatically all those participants on that email thread are thrown into a real-time chat room and we can make a decision. All right, let's go, with hi, let's go with Ty for Vince's birthday. Decision done. All right. Oh, looks like uh, in the meantime, Mike's gotten back to me. He's got some information for me and let's see what he has to say. Looks like it's great. He's thumbs up. He likes the idea. He thinks I should run with it. Great. So I need to take this and I need to go talk to Ashley and see what she thinks. But uh, let me look at Ashley. Up. Oh, looks like she's busy right now. Now, one of the great, also great new things with Symphony and our Microsoft Office integration is I now have a unified view of presence across my entire organization, not just on their chat activity, but this is also incorporated calendaring as well. So because Ashley's in a meeting right now, she's showing up in Symphony as busy. So I'm not going to be able to reach her right now, but I need to keep an eye out for her because I know she wants to make this trade today. So, but you know what? I work on Symphony. Why do I need to keep an eye out for her? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask Symphony to do that for me. So I'm going to contact a bot on Symphony, and I'm going to ask that bot to keep an eye out and notify me when Ashley's available. So the bot's going to look out for her. Tigger will take care of that. And in the meantime, I need to go update my model and be ready for her when she's out of her meeting and available. So uh, there's a few updates to my portfolio that we're going to do. And All right, she's already out of her meeting. OK. <laughs> so I'm going to go out and reach out to uh, Ashley right now and see if she wants to jump in uh, and have a real-time conversation. So I'm going to ask her to get onto a video call and a screen share with me so I can walk her through the changes in the model and see what she thinks. So let's give her a call. It's nice music while we're waiting. She'll join us in a second. There she is. Hey, Ashley, how's your day going for you? Scott. Hi, Scott. It's pretty busy over here in the London office. Have you got any good news for me? I do, I do. I, I, I got your request. I went through some research and ran through some changes in my model. I have this new option pair that I think that's going to really work for you. How, what do you think? Oh, that's brilliant, Scott. I, I love it. Can you send the model over to me so I can take a closer look? Yeah, so what I do is I would share the model with her in real time over, the, over screen share. She'll be able to see my desktop. And she likes the idea, so I'm going to send the drop the document in Symphony and get it right over to her. So. Dropping in in Symphony, you should have it already. Hope that works out for you, Ashley. Yep, got it. Thanks again. All and right. Take care. You have Cheers. a great day. Goodbye. It was that easy. I was able to open up a live video, face to face conversation with Ashley. We were able to share my screen, immediately get on the same page, and then I was able to take that document, I could drop it in there, and she'll instantly get it on Symphony. 
This is all like we were in the same room or in the same location. It's that easy. And with Symphony Meetings, it provides me a very quick, a very reliable way to just to connect to anyone that I work with at any time. And with using the Symphony mobile app, I'd also be able to connect while on the go um, via the mobile app. This is how I'm able to accelerate my work, get decisions made more quickly. And so, you know, with all that, it looks like Ashley liked my idea. She's excited, she's gonna run with it, so I can move on to the next task of the day. With Symphony, it's given me an edge in my job to allow me to make faster decisions based on the most timely and relevant information. And I'm really excited about all these new advancements, and I hope that you are too, and that you'll be able to take a look at them and get, definitely give us some feedback. And um, at this point, you know, it's, gosh, it's been almost 15 minutes. I think it's time to bring David back up on stage. So let's welcome him back up. Thank you. This was uh, smooth. It worked. Everything worked, Everything yes. Worked. Uh, there is, uh, you know, all these uh, bodyguards uh, keeping Murphy out of the, uh, <laughs> we didn't let him in. Of the room here. One question for you. What's Go your for. favorite feature of Symfony? My favorite feature, well, my feature, favorite new feature that's coming is definitely gonna be bookmarks. So, David, one of the things I've realized since I got here at Symphony is how vocal our customers can be. <laughs> and bookmarks are really gonna help me to get managed and control all that user feedback, all those feature requests that I'm getting from everyone. I build a bookmark them and keep track of them. And I wanna say one other thing. The other thing with bookmarks, it is built on something new that we're, we're releasing called the Extensible Actions Menu. And that's something we're gonna be opening up on the platform. And so third party developers will also be able to add to that. So that's something in 2019 you'll be able to access. And that, I'm really excited of where they're gonna take that. So they can take a message, mm -hmm. any message, yeah. and then add their own actions against it. Exactly. Wow, yeah. that's gonna be cool. That's gonna really drive workflow. Yeah, excellent, well, it was great having All you right. here. Thank Thanks, you very David. much. All right, bye. <laughs>
and it was my second day on the job and it was Innovate and I had no idea what I was doing. Well, in a one year's time, I'm up here, I'm here with Leia, I'm really excited about what our clients have done in one year's time. They've been able to innovate and take what uh, Ken had showed us uh, as far as the building blocks and innovate on that and take it to the next level. So uh, what I want to do is um, not talk too much because I think we ran over a little uh, with, uh, with some of the previous presentations. I'm cutting it down and we're going to try to get these clients here up on stage and take you through that day in the life that we started to paint earlier. So what if I told you you could take a process and that process took a day or a couple of hours and get that down to a minute or seconds? What if I told you you could price a trade quicker or more accurately? What if I told Chris, you... Chris, Chris, we, we said we're going to show them, not tell them. You're right. Right? I okay. could go on forever. So let's, over let's to you. It. Let's get them so up here. We do not want to tell you. We want to show you. And to do this, we're going to go back to our day in the life example of our cross asset PM, Ashley. This is not an ordinary day for Ashley. Fed rate hike last week, brewing US-China trade war tension. Ashley gets into the office today. She's expecting extreme volatility. With extreme volatility, big opportunity for better trades. So we're going to walk through four examples of what our customers are doing on top of the Symphony platform. Again, going through day in the life. It starts with client account onboarding, product clearance, from trade structuring, pre-trade negotiation, all the way to better and faster post-trade reconciliation. So Ashley's sitting down, and she wants to trade a new options pair, but she needs product clearance ASAP. There is a bot for that, and we are going to bring on stage a customer who's developed a bot that accelerates document collection and the client account or new product onboarding. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brittany Garland from IHS Market. So, all right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Brittany Garland. I lead the client engagement and onboarding initiatives uh, streams on the Counterparty Manager platform. Counterparty Manager is a platform today that's used to exchange documentation and information related to the regulatory and onboarding spaces. It's currently utilized by over 9,000 buy side companies, comprising 165,000 legal entities being accessed by over 150 banks and custodians. In order to make the information and documentation gathering process more efficient, we've created IzzyBot. So let's go back to Ashley's day. She, of course, is determined that we're going to need to go through a robust set of approvals to get this new product onboarded for an account called Ocean Cliff, managed by MK Capital. The first step would be to start a chat room, including all of the necessary teams. So she's already done that, and in that team is Lee Whitney. Lee knows that his first point of call is going to be to retrieve entity data and that documentation for the account Ocean Cliff. So Lee reaches out to Izzy and says, hi Izzy, please can you get me my entity data for MK Capital, and for the account Ocean Cliff. What Izzy is now doing is she's pulled down all of the account information related to that entity. Now Lee knows that he's going to need to provide supporting documentation to back up that information. So he clears his previous search, asks Izzy to pull down documentation, identifies the account, and we can see what Izzy has done is has pulled all of the supporting account documentation to get this onboarding process started for our new product. Lee forwards that information back into that chat that we've created and obtains the necessary approvals to get the product open and ready for Ashley. It's fantastic. So what do you think the impact of this is going to be at IHS Market and of course with your clients? You know, Leah, it's a, that's a really good question. So. Um, previous to having Izzy, sometimes users would spend hours back and forth client communication um, to retrieve this data. And as we just saw, we've done it in mere minutes. And we do foresee this expanding out into the broader onboarding workflow and process to make that process even more efficient. 
definitely streamlining a key part. Yeah. Um, and Izzy, short for is Isabella, is that right? No, actually, we, it's a play on words. So IHS is, we were playing around with that, and okay. Izzy. All right, <laughs> works for us. Thank you so much, Brittany. Thank you. Excellent, good job. Amazing. So uh, everybody out in the audience, uh, don't do it right now, but you can actually link to Izzy. Um, and you can uh, talk to Izzy, uh, and, and you can have access if you uh, are so inclined um, to get access to 165,000 client accounts. So uh, let's keep moving through uh, the day in the life. So, uh, so now we've got this uh, set of uh, products that have been onboarded, and now we need to move into uh, building, building trades. And so uh, Alliance Bernstein's built um, Abby, uh, another uh, in the long line of... Uh, of uh, bots that um, will allow for trade building to happen where a portfolio manager can put a few commands in and, and Abby goes out and grabs a bunch of information, tees it up so that they can make decisions. So please welcome to the stage Gavin Rahm from Alliance Bernstein to take us through this. Well, thanks. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm a high yield fixed income portfolio manager at Alliance Bernstein. And to illustrate why I'm here today, we really need to go back in time together. It's only been nine months, but it kind of feels like the stone ages to me. And this is, this is a, the time I'm talking about is when building a cash bond trade was completely manual. It was sent through a mass of emails. There was a huge email trail going back and forth across various teams. And each of those emails was hand transcribed one by one into our portfolio management system. There's a lot of problems with this. Well, some of the problems are it's monotonous and really boring to enter all those trades. I did it for the first portion of my career. I'm glad they don't have to do that anymore. Um, the other things that are, are, are issues with it is that it's really slow and it takes a lot of time and it's, frankly, it's error prone. There's a human translating information from an email or what a portfolio manager actually wants to do to get it to be a live trade in our system. So what we started thinking about is how can we leverage Symphony to automatically build trades for us that are accurate, timely, and can be reviewed by the portfolio management team in real time. So fast forward to today, I'm proud to present our new best friend in portfolio management, Abby. What Abby does is it's a trade building bot, and Abby takes portfolio manager tr instructions from around the globe across all of our offices and aggregates their instructions into actionable trades quickly, efficiently, and honestly, this is something that we used to take five to 30 minutes per trade. These now happen in a matter of seconds, as you'll see. So in the back, we have uh, Addy Thayer, a member of our, uh, the head of our Abbey development team, and we'll take you through a demo of what Abbey can do. So in this volatile day, being a portfolio manager, I always want to go the opposite way of the market. So. Luckily, when there's volatility in markets, Alliance Bernstein always gets inflows, and we got $2 million in today, which is great for us. So what I'm thinking about doing is splitting that investment. I want to do half in a cash equivalent instrument and half in a credit sensitive instrument. So first, what I'll do is I want to ask Abby, I want to ask Addy uh, to instruct Abby to tell me what the yield on the six month T bill is. And what you can see here is Abby, Addy, Abby and Addy, I guess, right? <laughs> you, can see, you can see how we got the name Abby. I think Addy was actually the key person who decided that, and it sounds like his name. So, uh, so we have the QSIP of the six-month T-bill. The maturity date is in April 2019, and the yield is 2.4%. So I take that information, I put it away, and I think, actually, what I really want to do with my first trade is I want to buy a Verizon long bond. So I say, Abby, buy 50 basis points of this Verizon long bond in AT model. AT model is a list of accounts, so I can do this not only one by one, but through a large bulk set of accounts. And what Abby will come back and say is, I've built the order for you, and if you click into the dropdown, you can see that in a matter of seconds, that would have taken five to 10 minutes to build manually in our portfolio management system. That was done in 10 seconds. All the accounts, $1.35 million spent on Verizon 42s. So now I can go back and say, well, we got $2 million in, I just spent 1.35. Why don't I park the rest in that six month T bill and earn 2.4% on it? So, Abby, buy 250K of the six month T bill in the AT model accounts. That's five accounts. That will cover the rest of our inflow. And in a volatile market, I now just accomplished two things very quickly. I took advantage of an opportunity, parked some cash in treasuries, 
and also bought Verizon long bonds. That's something that would have taken us a long time and been a complex process that's now boiled down to an extremely simple, efficient, and fast process for Alliance Bernstein. That's amazing. So uh, this morning when I was um, trying to corral everybody to come up and, uh, and get their microphones on, uh, you walked in and I said, what are you doing with your phone? And, and I said, what are you talking to Abby? <laughs> and, he, and you were, which was uh, quite shocking to me. Uh, catching up on um, information from the Asian markets from overnight. So what's amazing is you just saw this happen in one chat room across a handful of portfolios. What's going on right back at, right, right now at our office in New York and London is there's various investment teams that run all different types of portfolios and strategies that are doing the same activity over and over. So this is a duplicative process that's happening across the firm efficiently across all of our teams. It's fully adopted across our fixed income platform. So you're in production. Where do you see this going? It's a great question. So this opened up our eyes to kind of, you know, fixed income. Maybe we're not the most innovative folks, but this opens up our eyes to what, is, what the potential in the future is. We're calling this Abby version one. Abby version one, I tell Abby to do something and she does it for me very quickly and efficiently. It's fantastic. But the truly transformative piece is Abby 2.0, which we'll be releasing in the coming months. Wouldn't it be great if Abby could monitor all the things that I care about as a portfolio manager and recommend trades to me? When I come in in the morning, I want to know that there's volatility in the markets and I want to know that Verizon long bonds look cheaper than they've been over the past six months according to our quant tools. I want to integrate all of our quantitative and fundamental analysis that we have in-house with market data and have that come together for a set of trades that Abby would propose to me and be curated by portfolio management. It's amazing. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for the time, everyone. Yeah. I'm sorry. So Ashley, our portfolio manager, now has a trade formulated and it's time to uh, push that out to the sell side for um, a response for the IOI that has been created here. Um, so I would like to uh, introduce Josh Carroll from RBC to come up and talk about Arthur, who consumes all of the information from, from Abby and, uh, and formulates uh, a, a a response to the IOI by pricing and teeing it up for your traders. So welcome aboard. Hi, Chris. Thank you. Hi, I'm Josh Carroll. I'm Global Head of Market Data for RBC, but under my tech uh, portfolio. I also look after the Symphony platform and all the chatbot development around that. Now, um, that's probably the coolest part of my job, to be honest, uh, inventing chatbot names and uh, stuff like that. So um, Arthur. Arthur is obviously the name we're going to go over today. And what I'm going to show you today and the architecture, and we're actually going to do a live demo with Abby's bot and Arthur um, on stage in a few minutes. But what I'm going to show you here, we didn't even have existing probably about four weeks ago. And I also had a holiday for a week in there, so that shows how confident we were we could build it. Um, we as a company have been trying to uh, align ourselves into more client-centric approach. So we realigned some of our business silo technology groups into building a client-first digital channels group. And for those of you hanging around a little bit later for the 11 o'clock, Kim, uh, who runs that group, will be on one of the panels, and so you'll get to hear her interactions. The stuff that I'm going to walk through here is really uh, a collaboration, not just with the Symphony platform, but with, within my own technology group, so my chatbot development team, my fixed income development team, Kim's client first group, and obviously our partners with this, our clients, Abby uh, and Alliance Bernstein. So to walk you through what um, we will be showing in a demo in a few seconds. So we really want to uh, be able to enable match, uh, matching of the axes from RBC and Alliance Bernstein, and historically doing that through sort of fixed channels and setting up private communications, or using some of the well-known actors in the marketplace is costly for us. So trying to work out alternative ways of enabling more digital channels and doing that quick and easily is what we've been trying to achieve. So here we're going to show an IOI flow from uh, Abby through to Arthur. So it will come through the Symphony chat room. So they have a private chat room first on the Alliance Bernstein side. Then we have an internal external chat between RBC and uh, Alliance Bernstein, which has only got bots in it. Uh, so Abby talking to Arthur. We then, as a company, have a huge messaging bus, which we use uh, Solace technology around that. We do about 60 billion messages a day through that technology environment. So really trying to sync up Symphony with our existing tech stack was very important for us. Um, and then I'm going to show you two actual end user applications. So Tradebook, which our trader will use to accept the IOI, 
and then the sales book alerter, which is called Buzz, uh, will alert our salesperson that they need to reach out to Alliance. And down the road, we plan to add in sort of the auto negotiation piece of that. So, uh, moving on, let's uh, hopefully get two screens up. Good. Um, so on the right hand side here, this is RBC. On the left hand side, this is an Abbey laptop, uh, Alliance Bernstein. Um, they're showing the joint chat room that we have with Arthur and Abby in. And on the right hand side, I've got trade book. And then if we can bring up the sales book uh, alert as well. There we go. So that's the sales book alert uh, buzz app. So both of those together uh, are real applications that we use in production today. Uh, we're showing you these on the on stage. So without further ado, let's give this a go and see what happens. So Abby will initiate the uh, thing. I should get a pop-up. There we go. So on the left-hand side, we've got Abby initiating the request. Arthur has already acknowledged that they have made that request. Me as a trader has now got the pop-up. I'm going to click accept. You can also see on the bottom right-hand side here, toast notifications coming up from uh, the chat room. We have accepted that and then completed the uh, IOI. And if you look right in the top right-hand corner, you'll see there's two notifications come through to the sales user. One saying that we had an IOI come through, and then secondly, that our trader did actually say we want to reach out to Alliance, so they should therefore pick up the phone and start doing that. And you can see my pop-up here has been accepted. So if we just close that pop-up for a second, on the left here, and then we're going to do one more where we're going to reject it. So Abby, if you want to hit it again, let's go. Okay, second pop-up. I'm going to reject this one this time. I don't want to do this one. Should see that acknowledged. There we go. Ejected, complete. And we should see here that we're, Trader is not interested in completing that IOI. And that's it. So uh, that took us about a couple of weeks to build in total, and we plan to uh, expand this across more clients. So this is amazing. What, um, what kind of impact does this have on your business? What kind of, how much time are you going to save doing this? Yeah, I th it's, it, it varies the speed to market and also trying to simplify process. And make opening up digital channels that just didn't, you know, didn't exist easily before. For us to start putting in private lines and the, the secure communication required to do that, we don't have to do that anymore. We've got this as a platform. And to our end users using Tradebook and Salesbook, they're not even aware that actually the technology communication under the covers there is actually leveraging Symphony. Yeah, uh, so there's no real change to them, but we're just enabling channels. So, so what's next? Where are you going to take this? What, what, uh, what are you going to do with Yeah, that? we've got probably about four or five of the clients who are now we've built out this, this flow that we plan to take it to them next and uh, roll it out across production in the, in the very near short term. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Josh, that was great. I'm sure fantastic ROI for just a few weeks of work. Um, obviously, that ROI is not just financial impact, but faster execution, better pricing, better client experience. So Ashley has, has had almost a full day, but she's not done yet. She wants to do one more thing. So what she's going to do in her day, in this day in the life example, she's actually going to hedge her portfolio. Again, volatile <laughs> markets. She wants to make sure that she's hedged on, on the downside. So long day, lots of activity in the markets. The last thing she wants to do is put her operations team through the hassle of going through 1,800 emails and chats and phone calls to reconcile a potential trade break. Two of our clients have actually developed a solution that streamlines post-trade reconciliation. It can easily identify potential trade breaks and obviously accelerate the process of getting groups together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lou Rosado of BlackRock and Ziad Iskandar of BNP Paribas. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So, um, as you know, uh, reconciling trades and trade matching is a painful uh, process. So, uh, we said uh, the problem. I didn't know the 1800. I wish I knew that before the uh, <laughs> presentation. So we wanted to, it's very email heavy. The, there are people checking systems, emailing, calling to resolve these uh, issues. So this is an area that's ripe for automation. Okay. So I'm Lou Rosado from BlackRock, and I focus on our uh, business strategies and, and investment operations. And uh, we, we also help drive innovation through our partnerships. 
with firms like BNP. And uh, you know, the problem today in the post-trade space, or if you follow the true uh, full life cycle of a trade, and then move to post-trade and asset servicing, uh, there, there's a lot of activity and a lot of disparity in the way we connect through that full ecosystem. Uh, for BlackRock and our counterparties, that means uh, not just executing brokers, but prime brokers, clearing brokers, through to a custodian, taking a transaction from the post-trade lifecycle to finality is a very, very disparate process today. All our firms have very strong, robust proprietary systems, but then how we interconnect is really where the challenge is, and I think where the opportunity lies here and what we'll talk about today. Exactly. So uh, having gone from uh, last year where we're connecting people, we're connecting systems, and uh, so what was the solution? We had a three-part solution. We wanted to, uh, you know, the process has been pr uh, reactive rather than, than proactive. So we wanted, as a uh, uh, BNP Paribas, to proactively push the trades and the status to the client. We wanted to give the BlackRock the ability to query themselves, okay, that's not what I want to see, I want to see this or that. The ability for them to query and then create a space in which you can resolve these trades and uh, process them uh, and uh, moving it forward. So this is what we're going to show you here. So uh, what you see, this is a chat room. This is between identified teams at uh, BlackRock and uh, BNP. On a regular interval, this, the bot is going to be, uh, the bot's called White Sand, by the way. The bot is going to be pushing uh, these trades. You're looking at dummy data. If there are any sales and trading that notice the rate is not correct, please. Hold on to that thought. <laughs> so uh, as you can see here, you, you get what the, those are FX trade. You see the FX uh, pair and the rate. You see the, the trade date, value date, all the trade terms. And all the way on the right, you see the status of, of that trade. OK, so this is the first thing, the ability to push to them. And, and then really, for if you look at that, that's a lot of information on the screen. And, and really, that's the challenge today. So uh, in the post-trade space, really, we're focused on identifying and resolving exceptions in real time. And the problem is, how do we get that information in real time? So I, really, here, I'd like to see my, all my Japanese yen exceptions at this point. OK, let's do that. And here we go, unmatched trades, which is really uh, the bread and butter of the operations team to be able to identify then resolve that activity or, or those exceptions and doing it in a means it's more efficient than you know, all the disparate processes today or where we leave SDP and start to communicate via phone or exactly. Uh, email. Exactly, too many emails. And as you can see, there are many unmatched trades. This is not the reality, of course, but we wanted to fill the page. Usually we have very <laughs> few. <laughs> so what do you want to do next now that we have an unmatched? You want to talk about a specific trade maybe, uh, discuss a specific trade. So. Uh, let's say we want to create the, uh, the space for that. We're going to take the first line. We want to fix it. So when we click on fix it, we want to create a room. You can see here on the left, we created, uh, it's going to pop up anytime now. There we go. Uh, a room that's specific to this trade, okay? You have all the trade terms. This room is going to discuss this specific trade. And you have all the details here and the relative uh, themes. So now we went from identifying the problem trades, giving the ability for the client to pull those trades and then engage with us to uh, resolve the issue. And, and the, you know, now, now the power of what you've built and the way we're collaborating on that eventually will take us to really the, the end game and, and not just identifying and resolving, but then moving that back into workflow. Yep. And I think, that, you know, Symphony obviously is the uh, common uh, network or community now that we can build upon things like this to connect us where we all have uh, proprietary systems. BlackRock, uh, you know, fortunately has a, a, an operating platform that's fully integrated called Aladdin, but our counterparties invest in their own platforms and all the orientations of who we transact with, then we have a common thread to bring exceptions information to us in real time. The critical thing is in real time and then have the ability to move that back into workflow like you demonstrated here. Exactly. Fantastic. So there we go. Thank you, that's great. You. So I have a burning question, which I hope uh, more than one, one of us is, is dying to know. We've seen Abby, we saw Izzy, we saw Arthur, and White Sand. <laughs> What's behind the name? So, well, uh, we like to uh, mirror our uh, clients. We see ourselves as the, uh, you know, the negative uh, of, uh, of what our clients. A nice so contrast to the black rock. <laughs> there the you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Although you may not see a, uh, the, the, uh, the, the future uh, heat around a relationship between Abby and Arthur, which I think might be a love uh, story. <laughs> <coming> <laughs> So next year, maybe you will show us uh, Blue Boulder, right? Oh, who knows? Absolutely. Uh, earlier okay. than that, hopefully. Excellent. So I think David may have another question for you, but we'll just do a, a quick wrap. So why don't you stay on stage? David's going to come up. We'll do a quick wrap. Chris, you want to do a, a wrap of what we saw? Sure. Let's Great. go through it. Okay. So just as a, a quick recap, Ashley started her day. It was a volatile market. There was an opportunity to put on some great trades. And these were examples of automations that our clients have built on top of Symphony to help various of their employee groups accelerate their days, reduce error-prone mistakes, and so on. Started with fast trade, clear, trade product clearance. From there, moved to straight trade structuring. That's right. And then the IOI was pushed out to the sell side, and it was priced up and provided to the trader. And then we got through our trade reconciliation pretty quickly, efficiently, cutting down what generally took until the end of the day down to a minute. It's amazing uh, the utility of all of these automations. Yeah, what a day in the life. And again, these were just examples of a day in the life. David talked earlier about bringing down the borders. With workflows on top of Symphony, when the borders come down, the opportunities become endless. So I'm going to turn it over back to David. Thank, thank you. you very much there. Thank, thank, you. thank you, David. Uh, thank you. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of our presenters. And uh, you had the courage to come up here. And so that it, was a, it was you know, a miracle that uh, everything worked so far. So I probably just jinxed it for the rest of the day. So i got to leave now. Um, I, have to, I have to second what, what, uh, what just Chris said. Uh, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of you know, uh, luck sometimes, and, and obviously, work to, to make it work. What amazes me um, is that a year before, we had no idea about any of these use cases, any of these examples that will come on stage. And you have just shown us, I think, maybe the tip of the iceberg. So the question I have for each one of you is, what's next? What are we going to see a year from now? So uh, I'll speak about. Uh white sand uh, version 2.0 hopefully so now that we've surfaced these trades this is all nice but we want to be able to do a couple more things we want to be able to highlight the specific trade term that's causing the mismatch okay we want to enable when we get to that room we want to enable everybody to uh, modify the term that's causing the problem correct them uh, and be able to feed it into our downstream system so that blackrock aladdin or our systems and also you know, there's a trade that has, for a specified time, has not been resolved after four hours. Well, that I need to auto-escalate that. So mm -hmm. nothing slips through the cracks anymore. Okay. So those are some of the technical next things. And, and the benefits for, for you uh, would be? Well, uh, the benefits for us, obviously, the, uh, the time saving, uh, the client experience. Uh, this is, let's not forget, we're very focused on providing a, a client experience that makes them keep coming back to us. And uh, the time savings uh, and, mo and money is, you know, yet to be measured, but uh, we're very confident of uh, with that. Thank you, yeah. And, we, and we, no, we mutualize those benefits. And, you know, like you think back a year ago, BlackRock had just opened up and permissioned everybody to use uh, chat externally. You know, and so the march began to just begin to communicate, the basic communication through uh, the, the chat mechanism. With the introduction of rooms now and uh, the ability to use bots to capture data, bring that data in a structured format, and then communicate it, but also bring it back into workflow. And so for us, it's really the future, hopefully, it will be to take the work our counterparties have done or the community has built upon, replicate, replicate those things in our own environment. Really to bring back into our workflow in Aladdin the, uh, the data that we're moving or communicating through the chat mechanism. You know, and then from there, uh, really, like the, the, the true, um, the, the end game for us is really further that automation through the life cycle Post-trade has a lot of activity between confirmation through to settlement. Uh, you take that across asset class, and it varies uh, from uh, you know, ETD, OTC, uh, all the different instrument types that we transact today all have different requirements around uh, whether it's cash settlement or mm -hmm. uh, to a cleared status. Yep. But bringing a transaction to finality uh, in the volumes and the complexity of all those things is really challenging. Without automation, we'll never build the capacity We'll, we'll never maintain it with human beings. It, you know, that capacity has to be created through innovating things like this. It seems like a simple step, 
what we demonstrated here, but it's a building block to then that workflow integration that takes it further out. And if the community is doing that, and so it, we, we can leverage that across the broader community within Symphony to do these exact same things with other counterparties. You well, talk to other the, banks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get the call to action. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, I, I have to actually, um, it's interesting when I hear things like Tigger, White Sand, Abbey, is the fun aspect. And if you're a CIO, it must feel like a stern parent where you prevent <laughs> people from doing bad things. Now it feels like a parent where you can put them in a play box, go off, smoke a cigarillo, and they're having fun. <laughs> so when you think about the tone of conversation around how people are using this ecosystem, in the space of the year, what surprised you? The number of bots? Do you feel like the motivation for people to get into Symphony is changing? Well, first of all, I see emotions coming to Symphony. <laughs> <laughs> I think the names are, are, I think, illustration that people are connecting uh, with Symphony in a way that is different than in the past. Um, and, and we hear it from our customers. You know, they want us to do things that, that is really um, close to their heart. And they want us to invest in, capa invest in capabilities that will make their life far better um, than before. You know, bookmarking is just one example, but we are working on dozens of features um, around that. So I feel that emotional connection um, and, and that you know, gives us so much energy, so much passion, which we, we are working relentlessly. Uh, in our engineering organization, in our sales and marketing organization to bring those things live. Second thing is the cat is out of the bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, in a very positive way. As I said, last year, I could not even have thought that we will be on stage talking about this. And so I just cannot imagine what will be the next year innovation and, uh, and what our customers are doing with our APIs, with our constructs. Um, and, uh, and the magic is, is here. And, you know, Leia said limitless, and that is true. Well, it's fascinating, and we would be remiss if we're talking about the power of networks if we didn't let people actually connect face to face. So you do, in fact, get a 15-minute coffee break, and please, once again, do connect with the um, Symphony uh, Innovate Bot through Symphony. Do check out the booth and come back because I believe there is the real time. Hacking, Hacking, yes, and of we'll course, back a conversation here. on digital transformation. So thanks thank very you. much, everybody. Thank you very much. Join me taking the